I am Wolverine. Kakashu, Gulo Gulo. live in the most remote place that you can find on the planet just about. In the heart of the Rocky Mountains, in some of the most rugged terrain imaginable, uh, wolverines seem to be able to move through that country and, and uh, make a living at it. Wolverines are just amazing. They'll just take off across the mountains and uh, up, up one side and down the other and nothing seems to slow them down. There's a, a general fascination with wolverines as being um, sort of the ultimate wilderness animal. They're vicious, they're uh, uh, elusive, they're very difficult to see. They're at very low densities, they're very seldom found, and uh, as a consequence, we don't have a lot of data on, on wolverines. Well, they're difficult to study for a variety of reasons. It's difficult to find them and catch them. So using both uh, hair snags as well as uh, remote photography, non-invasive methods where we don't actually have to handle the animal, we can, we can identify individuals, we can get a handle on population density and, and uh, get quite a bit of information about the wolverine population in an area without having to be quite so uh, uh, invasive with an animal that's very difficult to handle. So we're putting the camera in position here that it'll get frontal shots of the Wolverine when it comes in to work the beaver bait, get those chest patterns we're looking for. Camera's in its case, wired secure, snow cover in place, all set up and ready to go. We're on to the next stand. So we're combining trapping knowledge and academic knowledge together here. And just like a trapper, a wolverine's tough. Just like a trapper, a wolverine goes places other people don't. And just like a trapper, a wolverine's most active in the winter. So the two of us are kind of the same thing. We might as well blend our activities together. Use trappers out on the landscape where wolverines are on the landscape. Get some info, get some data, get some photo, get some DNA. I mean, there's been some token efforts to use trappers' knowledge over the years. But this is the first time that I think that trappers have really been engaged have helped set the protocol, have helped set the program, and are out in the field doing the work. And for me, that's exciting because I personally feel there's a lot of value to society and trapping. This will illustrate another one of them, I hope. We're about two miles away from our bait site and now we've hit fresh wolverine tracks. I mean, last night fresh, so the team is happy. We'll see what's happening to that beaver on that dam. But I'll be surprised if that beaver hasn't been uh, Wolverine. Okay, a spot for a bait and a camera. So, you know, there's all kinds of stories getting told here this winter, and we're the ones who are unraveling it. And I mean, hey, man, it don't get any better than that. They especially like beaver bait. Perfect. It's got a lot of fat in the meat, and, and even when it's extremely cold, it, it retains its scent, and it doesn't freeze as hard as, as uh, uh, less fatty meat. Um, and so it, it works as an excellent bait uh, in winter time. And we position the bait in a way that makes it difficult for the wolverine to, to get at it easily. In, in the process of trying to get at the bait, they'll climb over this apparatus so that we'll get a, an opportunity to take a photograph of their underside so that we can determine the sex, we can identify individuals by the white crescents that occur on their, on their, on their throat and, and uh, chest. Um, and, and we can also get samples of hair as they're climbing over this apparatus to, to try to get to the bait. All of these alligator clips have been set off because of all the action. And we'll put that DNA sample, hair sample, into a separate little envelope and we'll date it, the location, 
and uh, the time. And we're trying to find out who's who here. Within days, we had uh, hits at all those locations. So just putting that trapper knowledge together, following the tracks, knowing the habitat they like, and the type of food that they like, and the type of scents that they like, all of those things help us put this story together. Some of the other wolverine, we caught one this morning on another trap. We're thinking that maybe that's a different wolverine. The behavior it's showing is it's very hesitant around the beaver. It wouldn't come in. And we caught that on video. We would never have saw that if it hadn't have been for the videos. So we're using a multi-tiered approach here to get data, information, and some great footage. These camera traps are totally trapping. So it's totally the same. You're trying to position an animal and to take something from that animal. In this case, we're not taking its hide. We're just taking a little piece of hair and we're taking its picture. It's trapping, cut and dry, trapping. Well, wolverines are a symbol of, of wilderness. That's something we're losing very rapidly in, in Alberta with industrial development and, and uh, road construction, oil and gas development, seismic lines everywhere. Uh, we don't understand uh, the limits to development that wolverines can tolerate. The public relates to research that tries to give us some, some answers about what's going on with these, with these animals that we don't understand very well that, that uh, occur within our province, but uh, very, very few people in the province have ever seen one or ever will see one. Uh, but uh, just knowing they're out there is pretty cool.